Hi there, this is a statistics video on a, how we construct and uh, put together a cumulative frequency histogram. Alright, we might be asked to display the following data on a cumulative frequency histogram. So we have the score and a frequency here that we might have already uh, put together. Now if we ask for cumulative frequency, to accumulate something is to add it uh, together until it builds up uh, into a larger total. So cumulative frequency histogram, we need another column here that adds up the frequency column uh, gradually, progressively. So uh, I'll show you how we do that. We have a cumulative frequency column, and that's what we're going to be graphing. It adds up the frequency column as we go. Now the first item in our cumulative frequency uh, column is uh, agreeing with the first item, the first frequency of the first score. Because what we're saying is so far, if we take into account the frequency of the first score, we've got a total of three, which is fair enough. Then we will add up uh, the frequency total so far of three with the frequency uh, item of uh, the second score and we get a total of 10 so far. So at this stage we're saying there are 10 scores so far, 3 from the 2 and 7 from the 3, making a total of 10 scores so far. So we then look at the frequency of the next score and add that. So we've got 12 scores so far when we've taken into account the frequencies of the, the scores 2, 3 and 4. Add the 12 so far to the 6 and we've got a total of 18 frequencies so far. Add the 5, we get 23, and altogether we have uh, supposedly 25 scores. So we'll double check that in a minute. But we added up the frequency column as you go. You just zigzag from the previous total, add the next bit, make a new total, add the next bit, make a new total. And that uh, is how you construct a cumulative frequency column. We'll do the double check. The total of the frequency column, if we get a, a total for that second column there, that should equal the final value of our uh, accumulated total there in our uh, cumulative frequency column. So if we add up the frequency column, we get 25, uh, 3 plus 7 is 10, etc. 25 there. And if that agrees with the final value of a column that's supposed to add that up, then we're, uh, we're in business. I think we'll uh, be confident that we've done that correctly. So we have a cumulative frequency column there now that we've created. Now let's just graph that into a histogram. Uh, so we'll put the scores of 2 through to 7 across the bottom there. We'll go uh, now, we'll have a look at the, the values of the cumulative frequency column here because that's what we're going to be graphing. It goes from 3 up to 25. So we want that cumulative frequency vertical axis to go up at least to 25. So I've got it going up to 26 there. So one at a time, we're going to graph for each of those scores, 2 through to 7. We're going to graph its cumulative frequency value from that third column. So it's this column here that we're actually graphing the cumulative frequency column. So the score of 2 has a cumulative frequency of 3. The score of 3 has a cumulative frequency value of 10. The score of 4 has a cumulative value of 12. We'll graph the 18 as a cumulative frequency total for the score of 5. The score of 6, when we add that to the total, we've got 23 so far and 25 altogether. Now you'll notice there that the values uh, always go up. Now if uh, one of these scores has no frequency, like a zero in here, we might get some columns that are the same size as each other, indicating that the total doesn't uh, increase. But the vast majority of cumulative frequency histograms are progressively higher as they go because there's no surprise, we're adding things up and we're not really taking anything away. So that's how you can tell sometimes, or most of the time, that it is a cumulative frequency histogram because it, it always goes up, or it tends to anyway. So that's a cumulative frequency histogram. And there you have it. Uh, I hope that helps. That's how we create a cumulative frequency column on the edge of our previous frequency distribution table. And then we just graph that column we created. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.